I took this picture, uh, really, I think it was the difference in the style of architecture and all the rest of it. The poster appeared, but couldn't believe my luck. When I checked the back of the camera, and this guy is cycling through, the traffic light there is clearly showing red, and it's just one of these where a title just came straight to mind, which is uh, Saddle Jockey. Right, moving swiftly on, looking at it, and you think, okay, so what are you going to do with a picture of a saddle jockey like this? And uh, I was going through some old videos and came across a sketch technique which I've not used for quite a while. I thought, could work a treat with this. So let's take a look. Starting off, we're going to use Command J or Control J to duplicate the background layer. Next, by going to Image Adjustment, we're going to drop down to Desaturate. So clicking on Desaturate as desaturated the picture giving us a black and white looking image we're going to duplicate this layer again using command J or control J so that's duplicated the layer again but this time we're going to invert it in other words we're going to turn it into a negative looking picture that's like a negative black and white by using command I or control I that has inverted it and there it is you can see it does look just like a black and white negative in the days of film right next Coming up, we're going to change the blend mode from normal. We're going to drop down to color dodge. And when you do this, you suddenly think, oops, I've made a mistake. But don't worry, everything is still there. You can go to a filter. The one I did in my last video was other, and it was using minimum. You can use any of the blur filters. So it's well worth experimenting with all the different blur filters. The one I'm going to select for this is motion blur. Coming in, let's just grab hold of the slider, move it around, and that's what I like about it. You can see by just changing the angle of the slider, the way we can get the blur to work with the image underneath. Let's zoom in as well. Let's come to about this area here where you can see the buildings and our guy on his bike. And as we move it round, yep, into this sort of area, I think this diagonal there seems to work pretty good, round about the 63 there, taking the distance up. If you go a little bit too far, it begins to turn it more into a black and white effect with a bit of a effect as such. So just dropping this back down, into this area here, you see what we're into, we're into the 30s, that looks pretty good, that's a bit more of a sketch effect, let's zoom in just a little bit tighter, alright, I'm going to go to 100%, just seeing the way that's working, like it, perhaps need to go just a wee bit more, that'll do, click OK to that, and job done, right, zooming out, that's what we have so far, and you think, okay, you've got sort of like a bit of a sketch effect there, but uh, when you reach these sort of levels, don't forget, you can just start experimenting. For example, switching this off, and look what it does. It brings it through with the layer underneath. Okay, the colors m might not be brilliant, and you may think, I don't like that, but if you just come to an adjustment layer to hue saturation, and I've got a pretty safe bet this is going to be called yellow, which it is. You can just come in, you can sort of tweak these yellows, just changing it more that way, just taking the saturation out a little bit. And you can come in, you can play with all the different colours, and it's amazing what you can actually come up with. There you are, I've got blue traffic light there now. That'll confuse them. Right, but it is, you can sort of come in, you can play with all the different colours and tones in the picture. Let's just switch this off for one second. Let's switch that back on as well. Now, to go to the next stage, we can't actually work on this layer here because it's in the color dodge blend mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in a new empty layer. So just making sure our new empty layer is on top of our three layers here. Hold down the Alt or the Option key. So holding down that Alt or Option key, go into Layer, dropping down to Merge Visible just off the recording screen there, but it's Merge Visible you are heading for. That merges all the visible layers into this new empty layer there brilliant or what? Because this will allow us to do something else. We can now work on this layer because it's in the normal blend mode. We can go to filter, we can go to brush strokes, and one of my favorite is cross hatch. Just waiting for the filter gallery to open. That looks pretty good. We got a stroke length there. If you grab hold of it, I just need to wait a second because I just noticed the little blue line is still working its way across the bottom there. Well, there's an awful lot of sketching going on in this, so just give it a few seconds to do its stuff but you can see the nice effect that we've got here with sort of black and white lines that nice sort of blurry look good it's finished clicking on it you can see if we move it up too far the way it just gets it's just too much for this picture so dropping it back 
and it was, it was about six or seven, wasn't it? I think, yep. So the seven there looks pretty good. And again for the sharpness, try it on the different, but no, that's too much. So just bring it back into that sort of area. Strength, you've got a choice of one, you've got a choice of two, or you've got a choice of three. Two will do nicely. Click OK to that. That's now going to apply the cross hatch to the picture, as you can see from the status bar here. And uh, there it is, job done. We're going to zoom in. Let's take a look. And you can see the way the cross hatching is given. We're in at 100%. That really nice sort of sketch effect all the way through there. Great stuff. Like the effect on that? Command 0, Control 0 will go out to fit on screen. Okay, there's a few little bits and pieces. We've still got the matter of these layers here. So I'm going to click on the top one. Going to press Command or Control. I'm going to click on the second one there. So it was Command or Control. So then now they are both selected, is what I was struggling to say. Command G or Control G will put it into one folder. We can switch this off. There's something else you might like to do with it. We're going to give it a little bit of a tone in. And to do that, we're going to drop down. We're going to go to Solid Color. And immediately, Auckland has been plunged into darkness. But we're going to go for a blue tone on this. That looks pretty good. Click OK. Changing the blend mode of this layer from normal to soft lights will enable us to see through it. And you can see the way it's given it that nice sort of blue tone. You know, a bit like a blueprint style drawing, I suppose. And if we just click on it, the beauty with this now is we can come in and we can tone it however we want and even whatever color you want. You can come in, you can select a different color. Let's go for a green and yeah, we'll stick with blue. That looks pretty good like that. Just switching it on and off, you can see the difference. Let's go to Command 0, Control 0 again, which is fit on screen. You've seen the way that you switch the one layer off, revealing color underneath. Well, we can do exactly the same. Let's come to layer two, which has got the sketch effect on. We're going to come up to the opacity slider and drop in opacity back. You can see the way we can just bring a little bit of color through to the picture. That looks pretty good like that. Once again, coming in to our solid color picker, and we can just drop the toning back a little bit, allowing more of the color to come through. Zoom in. So, yep, I like the look on that. That looks pretty good. I like, like the effect. All working nicely together. Command 0, Control 0, fit on screen. Let's finish off with a bit of a border, a bit of a framework around it. We're going to put in, well, border, to be honest, it's not a frame. We're going to put in a new empty layer. We're going to pick up the lasso tool. My reason for doing this is we've just got the traffic lights just coming in a little bit too intrusively into our picture. So up around the guy's head, down around this boom. Yeah, I quite like those street signs in there. And you can see it's a very rough and ready sort of board that we are creating. In fact, there it is. Select, inverse. You've now got the double selection. Don't forget, we're on an empty layer. Coming across to the toolbar, making sure we have got default colors. So press D on the keyboard if you've got any other colors. Followed by X, which, which will put white as a foreground color. Picking up the fill tool, which is in with all the paint bucket tool, which is in with the gradient tool. Clicking down, Command D, Control D to deselect. Filter, blur, stay. Gaussian blur, and we're going to blur it by you can see just taking the blur up the way it's looking there you've still got that guy coming through there nicely which is just what i'm after just taking a bit off that traffic light looks pretty good click ok to it and there it is job done save this in layers because then you can come back into it you might want to make a few adjustments just sort of with the colors like that you might want to come in and change this you can so save in layers just look at it after a few few days. You'll see it with a fresh pair of eyes. If I just put that onto a black screen, that's something else that's quite important. Changing the color of the screen it's on can just help you to see various colors in a picture. I'm just going to drop that back. It's not as distracting as that gray screen. And just, just come into that like that. And there it is. Job done. Pressing tab on the keyboard. Command 0, Control 0. There it is. It's just a great way to have a little bit of fun with a picture, which otherwise, you know, what would you have done with it? But uh, now it's a bit different. Go on, give it a go. Until the next time, it's happy imaging and take care.